Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Travis and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a site to site VPN using WireGuard on the latest version of PFSense, which is version 2.5.0. And that was released to the public on February 17th, 2021. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about um, so WireGuard is essentially a very lightweight VPN and it's kind of taken the world by storm. You've probably heard of it. Um, it's very lightweight. It's built into the kernel. It's a layer three and above VPN. So it can transfer anything layer three and up. And it's, and when I mean it's very lightweight, it only has like a few hundred lines of code. Like this thing is efficient. Now, I am not a WireGuard VPN expert. I wish I knew more about it, and I hope to learn more about it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video is because I know there's a lot of people out there who are very interested in WireGuard, like me, but they've been struggling with it and it hasn't really clicked. And I'm kind of like that. I, I just managed to figure out how to get a site to site going. So I wanted to show you guys how to do the whole site to site thing. Um, now how to get other clients to connect, uh, not there yet, but, uh, if I figure it out, I'll make a video about it. Um, but anyways, let's jump right into things. So you see that I have a, two firewalls here, two PFSense firewalls, uh, running the community edition of PFSense. Uh, these are virtual and these live on two completely different servers. Now I am accessing them via the private IPs you see here, 10.200.5.1 and 10.200.6.1, because I actually have IPsec tunnels uh, to each server. However, these two firewalls cannot communicate with each other at all. So there's currently no connection between these two. And that's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna use WireGuard to set up a site to site instead of using IPsec. Now, my interface may look a little bit different from yours, and that's because I have smashed these two together just so that way I don't have to do any weird editing or anything like that. Um, keeps it together and it'll be easier to follow along. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into things. So uh, the reason I'm going to be using 10.200.6.1 as my main firewall is because this server is newer. Uh, there's nothing on here, and so um, this is going to be the, the primary. And 10.200.5.1 is going to be the quote-unquote client or peer. But in a way, they're, they're going to peer together, and uh, more about that a little bit later. So once you're in PFSense and you are updated to 2.5.0, go to your menu and go to VPN WireGuard and click on add tunnel. Don't forget to enable it. And just for the record, you can have multiple uh, WireGuard interfaces and that's the WG0 here. So if you already have a WireGuard interface and you want to create a site-to-site -site VPN, uh, your next interface might be WG1, for instance. So let's go ahead and give this a description. This isn't parsed, so we can kind of call this whatever we want. I'm just going to call this uh, the other guy, if I could type. And our address. This is going to actually be the WireGuard interface address. So this needs to be a subnet that you don't have in use. So I should not use 10.200.6.whatever uh, because that is in use on this network. Um, and this server can also talk to several other 10.200s. So I'm going to avoid 10.200 altogether. Uh, so let's let's go with 10. Dot, oops, if I could freaking type 10.235.0. Am I, oops, I hit the screenshot key, that's why. 10.235, and we'll do 0 0.2, and this will be slash 24. 
Our listen port is going to be 51820. We can actually leave this blank and it will use this value right here. And uh, because WireGuard uses cryptography, we need uh, to generate a private and public key. And PFSense has this nice button for us. And before anyone says anything, this tunnel is going to be torn down. Uh, these keys are not going to be valid after I produce this video. So you don't have to mention it. Um, so we're, we need to copy this public key. And we need to go to our other firewall now. So we're going to go uh, same place, VPN, WireGuard. We're going to add a tunnel. And now we need to do the same thing essentially. And now for the address, we need to pick another address uh, on this subnet. So I'm going to do 10.235.0.3/24. Our listen port is again going to need to match this side, so it's going to be 51820. And we also need to generate a private and public key. So there we go. And now we are going to add a peer. Now the peer is the other side. So again, we're going to add a description. And our endpoint, uh, because my servers do have static IPs, um, I'm going to enter the uh, IP address for uh, 10.200.6.1 and I'm going to blur it out. So um, this would be your public IP of your quote unquote server. So our endpoint port is going to be 518. To zero. We don't need to specify a keep alive here. If we did, so like if I put in 10, every 10 seconds, uh, this interface is going to generate some traffic to uh, send over the WireGuard tunnel. The nice thing about WireGuard is because it is so fast, it will spin up the tunnel as needed and tear it down. So I'm actually going to leave this blank. And here's where we're going to paste in the public key from this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And allowed IPs, this is going to be our remote network. So I want to allow over this tunnel um, 10.200.6.0 24. And our pure WireGuard address, so this is the address of the uh, interface that we want to talk to, and this will be 10.235.0.2/32. And optionally, we can add a pre-shared key. This just makes things a little bit more secure, but again, it's optional and entirely up to you. So I'm going to hit update and now we have um, our interface here. Now, before we, uh, before I hit save on here, I'm going to copy this private key. And now we're going to go back to this guy and we're going to add a peer in this case. So uh, basically the same thing. And uh, because this server does have a uh, public IP, I'm going to enter that one. And again, I'm going to enter the endpoint port, which is 51820. And again, um, we're going to skip the keep alive, and I'm going to paste the public key of this, of our second firewall. And again, allowed IPs. This is going to be uh, the local IP of this side, so 10.200.5.0 and uh, And I'm going to enter the peer guard um, the peer wire guard address for our other guy, and that's uh, 10 slash 32. And we don't have a pre-share key, so I'm just going to hit update. 
And now we save and we save. So uh, you would think that's it, but actually, no, we have a little bit more to do, but we're almost there. So now we need to go to interface assignments on both of these. So we go to interfaces, assignments. You're going to see we have an available network port, and that's uh, WG0, the other guy. So we're going to add that, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Whoops, assignments. Add. All right, so don't forget to save. Just make sure everything's all there. Um, if you have other uh, option ports, you'll see that here, but since I only have, this is my first one, uh, it's labeled as opt one. Uh, so we do need to enable this because it is not enabled by default. Uh, that's the one thing about PFSense. Anytime you add an interface, it's not enabled by default. So we need to go in here, check this box. You'll notice that we have nothing to do here. So um, this interface type does not support manual address configuration on this page. That's because we set it on the WireGuard tunnel page. So we just have to click save and apply. Same thing over here. Uh, we need to go to our interfaces, enable, save, apply, and that's it for the interfaces. But wait, there's of course more. Because this is a firewall, we need to go to firewall uh, rules. And since this is our server, we need to add in uh, a port forward here. But first, we're going to go over to the WireGuard tab, and you'll see that I've already added um, in any, any rule. So if we just take a look at this, we're passing. Uh, it's on the interface WireGuard, uh, IPv4 traffic, any protocol from anywhere to anywhere. We're just going to allow it. Now, of course, you want to tighten up your security. You don't want to just pass any traffic blindly. This is how worms spread, viruses spread, uh, hackers jump into networks. So use your best judgment. Um, lock this down. I'm just doing any any because this is a demo environment. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to firewall. We need to go to NAT. Actually, we can do port forward here, or we can actually go to firewall and rules. And on our RAN rules, we'll just create a firewall rule. We're going to pass. It's going to be IPv4, but we need to set this to T or, um, UDP, source, any, destination, any. But again, if you're using this site to site, it's recommended to tighten this up. So you want your source to be the other side. Um, however, I'm just going to let anybody connect to this. Uh, for our, desti our port destination range, we want to set this as our WAN address. And we want the port 52810. And save. And we're going to apply. And cool. Yeah, let's do host name to ping. 10.200.5.5.1 jeez 5.1 ping oh there we go okay cool so now we can actually reach the other side and that's it that's all we have to do we are we are done that's it so these two are now talking to each other and i can actually bring up uh, 10.200.6.1 and there we go and this is a virtual machine that is uh, that lives on the 10.200.6 network so if we do ping 10.200.5.1 there we go and if I open Firefox here and I do 10, 
and there's PFSense. So there you go. That's how you set up a WireGuard site-to-site -site VPN on PFSense. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I know I can't please everybody, so if you hate it, whatever, hit the thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe for more tech content. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You're all awesome.